Funding for this program is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. One thing that Maud always did from the time that she was very young was write. It's a very encouraging message that even when you're young and you have nothing to say, just keep writing. I'm Lona Felintikowski, and this is my daughter Emily Scott, and we're members of the Betsy Tacey Society. Maud Hart Lovelace was a Minnesota author who grew up here in Mankato. And when her child was growing up, uh, Maud Hart Lovelace started writing novels specifically for her daughter, for Marion, her daughter. These books recounted Maud Hart Lovelace's childhood here in Mankato in a fictionalized form. There are 10 books in the series, and they're sort of written to the age that Maud is as she's writing. As she gets older and older, the books also grow with her, following her adventures from when she was in elementary school, when she and her friends uh, would skip school or go to school and uh, have adventures on the hill, have adventures um, writing stories or getting into trouble, and following them as they got older, went to high school, and those books are written for people also in high school, so written at a little more mature level. And a kid like myself can grow up with these books and evolve as the books evolve as well into a different style, into a more um, adolescent style. Chapter one, getting to be 10. Betsy and Tacey and Tib were nine years old and they were anxious to be 10. You have two numbers in your age when you are 10. The beginning of growing up, Betsy would say. And this, so you can get into the oven on either side. We are currently in Maud Hart Lovelace's childhood home. This is where she spent uh, from the time she was born until she was in high school. And this uh, period in her life was recounted in the books, the childhood books that recount her life from the age of five until elementary school was over. She was here in the horse and buggy age and when the first automobiles came to town, when the first telephone came to town. Tacey was Maud's best friend. She grew up in the house across the street. Maud and Bick, Betsy and Tacey, remained good friends all through their lives. When they were 78 years old, they took a trip to Europe and they would call each other Betsy and Tacey, also in their correspondence. As Maud fictionalized many things, she also fictionalized the name of Mankato. And she called Mankato Deep Valley because it is a lot of rolling hills that go down into a river. We're having a party here at Betsy and Tacy's house in honor of Tacy's birthday. Anytime the children in the Betsy Tacy books had a birthday party, there was always cake, there was always lemonade and ice cream, and this is always something that Maude would go into detail about. One interesting scenario that was recounted in a couple of the different books uh, actually touches on racial tension. There was in Mankato a small community of uh, immigrants from Syria, and what Maud depicts in these books is that the character based on her Betsy and, and her friends showed or demonstrated a lot of racial tolerance. A lot of multi-generational families come to these events, maybe people who've read the books uh, when they were themselves young, who also bring their children now to events like this. The Betsy Tacey Society started because 
the books were going out of print. It was the late eight, 80s that I started reading the books to my daughter. She was about four years old. At the time, we didn't know where the houses were. There was a group of about 10 of us that picked up these wonderful books. We got together to see how we could keep the books in print and started a letter writing campaign and heard about high profile people who very much enjoyed the books like Anna Quinlan, Bette Midler, Judy Bloom. What my mother did together with a group of, of uh, members from all over the world was they were able to raise money and purchase first Casey's house, which was the first one to become available, and then secondly, they were able to purchase Betsy's childhood house, which is where we are sitting right now, and restore it to its original appearance. Hi, welcome back to Home Time. We're going to spend the next couple of shows doing what you might call a literary restoration of this house in Mankato, Minnesota. This is where the author Maud Hart Lovelace grew up in the late 1890s. Later on, she penned the Betsy Tacey books, which are all about her adventures with the little girl across the street. Well, it was 1995, I believe, that Tacey's house became available. And it was quite run down, but we wanted to have a little a place where we could have our little meetings and socialize. I think a lot of people's favorite children's books exist in the imagination only, and it's very rare to find children's books or books that people like myself have grown up with that also have a corresponding physical place. I'm Becky Haran, and this is Logan and Ethan, and we're from Orangevale, California, and we're here for the Tacy's birthday party today. Bench is where Betsy and Tacy go to eat their dinners, and they go up there a lot, and they hang up, the, hang out up there, right, as little girls. And what else do you remember about the bench from the stories, Logan? They, when they were trying to fly, they 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 jumped on it, and then they jumped off. Yeah. My daughter, Logan, has gotten very interested in the Betsy Tacy books from, from her grandma. And uh, we've been reading the stories and we went online to look at some other things about her and found out about the party and we decided to come here for um, the party with our visit to Minnesota. Well, I think we like uh, the relating to the, you know, the Tacy and Betsy are her, about her age. So she's six and um, she likes the stories about um, what they do and the adventures that they have. What do you like the best about the Betsy Tacy books? The, their adventures. Their adventures. We have a lot of families that belong to the Betsy Tacy Society that have five generations that are alive that have read the books. Betsy Tacy books, like the Laura Ingalls Wilder books, are written by someone who actually lives through that time period. Betsy always wanted to travel. Her family was very supportive and very encouraging of a young woman being an adventurer and sort of taking her own place in the world and, and following whatever dreams she thought she was capable of. I think that Mod Heart Lovelace is such a vein that runs through the entire Mankato experience. It's, it's a very integral part as the books not only recount her childhood, but also the evolution of this small town. The books have a lot of message of like, if you like something or if you have a dream, follow that dream no matter what. I think the books um, do a very good job of giving this message and sort of demonstrating it throughout Betsy's evolution from a child to an adult. You always see her following her stars, be they writing or traveling. It was, again, very timeless in so far as this is just something that happens in high school no matter what. You'll always have drama with boys and with friends and it's something that you can think back upon. Oh right, Betsy handled her problem with two paramours by being like this. I think that some of the fun of the Betsy Tacy series is how many mistakes and uh, trouble Betsy and her friends get into and how they're able to use these mistakes to grow together and to bring everybody closer.
Funding for this program is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.